didn't see you there, small to moderate internet audience that one could expect from your average YouTube video. Well, as long as you're here, uh, let me tell you about the movie pitch I've been working on. See, the, the project is currently titled Insert Coin. It's about a nerdette that enters an electronic video game fighting tournament. One where the beast, five-time champion, and prolific misogynist reigns. In order to prove gender doesn't matter, in video games at least, she must defeat him. Now, the, the players in our little adventure include the best friend, the douche, the cute boy, the mother, and of course, the beast. Uh, someone who believes that, uh, you know, girls should stick to Tetris. And we also have our protagonist, a uh, hyperactive, sort of aggressive young girl that loves to do victory dances. Now, uh, at the start of our story, we get to see our protagonist, uh, who's currently jobless, doing what she does at the moment to make money, which is she bets people on the matches of video games, playing the fighting game, beating them, getting their money. And on this day, her and her best friend have gone to the local arcade for a day of hustling, only to find that their arcade machine is broken. Undaunted, the best friend knows of another arcade, at like a golf land or something, that uh, has the same machine. So, they head over there, and not all that much hustling gets done, because uh, the protagonist spends most of her time flirting with, you know, the cute boy. And around closing time, they get approached by the douche. The douche being, you know, a douche, who happens to work at that arcade, and his general douchiness aggravates her so much she doesn't do very well. And he hits her at the end when she only has like a sliver of health left with an unnecessary flashy special move that has like 40 punches and she can try to run but she can't get away. She can try to block, she can try to parry, but that would require skills that, you know, she, she's doomed. She's just doomed. She dies and she gets to watch a little virtual character just like for 30 seconds. And then, you know, the, the douche tells her then about a tournament that that arcade's holding. And that the Beast, you know, the legendary figure in, in arcading, is going to be there. And that for a girl, she's pretty good. To her credit, she does not attack him right then and there. Her best friend tries to convince her that it would be a good idea, might be fun to, you know, join and, and play in the tournament. She'll hear none of this. She rushes off home and just angry as heck. You know, she probably breaks some stuff in her little crappy apartment because, you know, anger issues. Which some of us have. Occasionally. And the next day she goes to lunch with her mother. And her mother is a successful businesswoman. Her mother believes that there are only two possible paths in life. That you can either be, you know, get a career and be successful, or find somebody else with a career and leech off them. Now, our protagonist's reaction to being told what to do, she heads straight down to the arcade and signs up for the tournament as, you know, a big screw you to mom. And then training commences. Well, some training. Mostly flirting with the cute boy, which ends in a semi-date when she invites the cute boy to go for pizza. And she takes him to this little arcade, one of those really creepy places that have, like, the bad pizza and arcades and the mascot and the creepy suit. And she shows that his favorite arcade game is there, and it's actually in working order. He hasn't seen it for, like, ten years. He's, of course, overjoyed. But she also sees, over there in the corner, her best friend trying to play an arcade game and being bothered by the douche. So, of course, she heads over there to, you know, get him to stop. But his general douchiness just overwhelms her. Just, just comes over and he just spews douchery all over. And the douche just keeps, keeps douching. So she gives him a right cross across the face. It's only after he's on the ground and her best friend is, you know, trying to see if he's okay, that she realizes her best friend and the douche were also on a date. So she managed to ruin two relationships with but a single punch. An impressive beat. She tries to apologize to her best friend, but her best friend's sick of the whole aggressive, you know, mostly the aggressiveness that she has, the competitiveness, and won't hear any of it. She does manage to patch things up with the cute boy. She calls him later and apologizes and asks him if he would ever ask her out again. And he asks if he could join her at the tournament and watch her kick ass. So the day of the tournament arrives. And on this day, the you know, her best friend's there, but she's just there to, 
you know, root for the douche, and uh, the cute boy is there with her, and there's lots of nerds everywhere cheering and being excited, as only nerds can do, which is really this kind of subdued, yet way too energetic excitement that kind of happens at the same time. And the Beast actually has heard of her and approaches her before the start of the tournament, telling her that if a girl could actually beat him, he'd just drop right out of the tournament. So they have a friendly sort of match before the tournament starts, and she gets creamed. She gets completely destroyed by this The Beast character, which is actually this short Asian guy who insists on wearing sunglasses all the time. And, you know, she doesn't take that very well, but uh, she tries to shrug it off, and she, and she goes into the tournament. And she does really well in the tournament. She wins the first match she has, she wins the second, she wins the third, she wins the fourth, she has a cool little, you know, victory dance, kind of like... I don't know how her victory dance would go. Maybe miss some like you know, have a victory dance that goes for each of them, and uh, you know she 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 does pretty well until in the fifth match she plays the beast again, and the matches are done in three rounds. She actually wins the first round. She does a lot better, and the second round is really really close, but uh, she loses it, and then in the third round, facing off against the beast, she almost wins it again, but she loses. And she drops a huge F-bomb. Not to worry, though, because this uh, giant F-bomb here, it's only one in the movie, so therefore the movie could still be rated PG-13. This would be the only time she'd swear, and it would be a pretty, pretty big one. And she can just watch helplessly as this, you know, as the Beast goes on to win the tournament. Well, seeing how down she is, her best friend comes over to console her and tell her it's, it's all right. There are other things in life besides winning and beating jerks. And she also lets um, the protagonist know that the, the people who run the tournament want to know if she would be willing to fight one more match to see which of the fifth round losers gets to be ranked third or fourth. And lo and behold, she sees that the other fifth round loser is the douche. And their match goes almost exactly the same as the first one they fought. Except this time she doesn't let his douchiness overwhelm her. No, she keeps her head in the game. She keeps her head in the game, and she manages to, you know, do the parry move. She pulls off that insane nerdiness. She counters his incredible, overpowerful super move that is just unnecessary in the first place, and destroys him in a comeback victory that has the nerds cheering. I mean, wonderful nerd crowds cheering all around, and in all this cheering and people patting her on the back and going crazy, she turns to the nerd. And very calm, well, not the nerd, the douche. She turns to the douche, who is also a nerd, of course. Very calmly, shakes his hand, and tells him good game. And then, the more cheery happens, and she sees, over there, she sees the beast looking at her. And she looks at him, and he says, I could have done that. And she says, yeah, but you didn't. I did. And now, finally, she gets to jump into the crowd and be all excited and celebrate her third-place victory and hug her best friend and hug the cute boy and launch into one final victory dance. You know, and that, that would be the movie. Now, uh, you, you might think that this movie would be based on uh, that really good documentary, The King of Kong. No, I, I hadn't actually heard of that when I started making the movie. I would still suggest to anybody out there that you... Take a look at The King of Kong. That's a good thing. This uh, film idea was actually based on a really, really cool um, fighting game fight that happened in a tournament called EVO. And uh, if you want to see it, it's a popular YouTube video. Look it up. EVO Moment 37. Just just look it up. Just see it. It's freaking awesome. Blow your mind. The art style for these screens is uh, based on the art style of a man who does uh, who makes a role-playing game, a tabletop role-playing game. It's called Rissus the Anything RPG, or Rissus. Uh, just Rissus, R-I-S-U-S. Uh, search for that, look it up. It's a great game, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, thank you for watching. I apologize for the amount of times I said douche.